Alright, so the pet spotlight for today will be on the Flayer Youngling. Where do you get the Flayer Youngling? Well, uh, you get him right over here. In between Hellfire Peninsula and Terracar Forest. It's like, actually just straight up on the line. See, I'm at the bottom over there. Actually, you can't see my my mouse cursor. I have that turned off. <laughs> but you should be able to see where my marker is on the map. They're over here. They're... I think they're rare spawns because I can never actually seem to find them whenever I go out and look for specific breeds. Oh, there's one right there. Uh, that's because I don't have track pets on right now. I said I think they're rare spawns. I actually don't know for sure. I just know they're a pain in the ass to find. And I had to use uh, Realm Hopper, Cross Realm Assist, in order to find the correct breeds. So anyways, uh, enough about where to find them. You get them over here and there's the only place to get them. You can only catch them out in the wild. So, Fire Youngling, what's so good about him? Well, he used to be a lot better back in Mist and Pet area uh, before they nerfed Deflection. I actually don't know what Deflection used to do. I think he used to actually reflect damage and block it. Uh, but I don't know for sure. And now that I'm making this video, I probably should have looked it up. Uh, but I didn't. Anyways, he's still fine uh, as he is right now. I just know that he used to be a lot better back in Mist when he first came out. So, how do you use him? Well, basically with this skill build right here, you really don't deviate it from it very much. Flare Youngling is a humanoid type, which puts him at a disadvantage against the meta, which is dominated by undead pets and undead abilities. So, unless a humanoid pet is able to do something ridiculously good, it's not going to do very well in today's meta. So I think there's only like two humanoid pets that are tier one. Oh yeah, there's three. I keep forgetting about Ore Eater. That's the Anubisath Idol, the Fiendish Imp, and the Ore Eater. And the Ore Eater is overpowered. The Fiendish Imp has a ridiculously good move set for what his stats are. And the Anubisath Idol is just a... He is the poster child for a pet that has perfect stats and abilities that match him. Uh, so these three pets are all, you know, like wonderful top of their class special snowflake pets. And Flare Youngling, he, he's not. He's good, but just not, you know, like the superstars that these three guys are. I only have the Curious Wolvar Pup uh, starred because I use him a lot because he's actually pretty good too, but he's not tier one like these three guys. He's just a really good tier two because he has Snap Trap, which is an OP ability, but it's not OP enough because it's uh, by its nature dependent on luck for it to work. Flare Youngling isn't as much. He does have luck. Anyway, Flare Youngling, the SS breed, is the one you'd use the most, but you can also do an alternate build where you use the power power type or a power speed type. Uh, I don't think you'd ever want to use the HH type, though. It does have a pretty high attack pull, though. I don't know. I guess a case could be made for the HH breed to work as well. But usually you just want to go with the SS because the SS breed allows you to do what you want pretty great. And that's... Uh, go first to use Kick. Kick is a three turn cooldown ability which hits for about as hard as... Oh, actually it's a little bit more than a single hit from Blitz. So it does 210 damage. It's less than a basic attack. But not that much less. It's like 90 hit points less. Yeah, I guess that is. It's like a 75% damage of a normal basic attack, which isn't half bad with its effect of also if you go first in the turn you get to interrupt your opponent for that turn. It's basically like a mini stun. So if you go first you're basically just doing free damage and then you get to go uh, first in your next turn too as long as you're able to outspeed him. Uh, at 325 speed he'll be able to outspeed most pets except really fast ones like uh, the Fiendish Imp who's ridiculously fast and that's one of the reasons he's so good. Uh, so yeah any pet that specializes in speed like a bird or a critter type or you know, one of the freak ones like the Fiendish Imp or the Death Adder Hatchling, and you're going to get destroyed by them. Uh, but the meta right now isn't really dominated by speedy pets. It's all about slow, undead, hard hitters, so... Uh, <laughs> those ones beat him too, because he, he can't really take undead damage. You see, this is why he's not as good as he could be. Humanoids really get the shaft on the type disadvantage stick, just because of how strong undeads are. So yeah, he has a uh, kick, which is really good. 
uh, especially since he's a humanoid. Every turn that he does damage, he gets to heal up for 4% of his maximum health. That's why I said a case could be made for the HH types, because they are able to, theoretically, go first a lot and stop your opponent from actually hitting while healing up a little bit. And if he was the HH type, he'd heal up for a little bit more than the SS, since the HH has uh, 1,700 health, while this one only has 1,400. Anyways, his next ability, uh, Deflection. I'm actually going backwards here because the first one's just a basic ability. Deflection, like I said, I think it used to be stronger, but I don't know for sure. Uh, basically, it always goes first, so your speed doesn't matter, and it will just block all the abilities in that turn. So if your opponent threw down like a Curse of Doom, here, let me show you what that is real quick. A Curse of Doom, which, you know, it's a five turn dot. After four turns, you take a crap ton of damage. Uh, you could just use Deflection on that fourth turn and just block it. Plus, all the attacks that your opponent was going to do during that turn. So it's really good in, in PvP because there are uh, quite a few pets that are pretty common that use abilities with timed, uh, you know, like ticking time bombs on them. And you can just use Deflection to block all those. Plus, you can just use it off cooldown uh, to advance the turn clock forward one. That way, you get to use Kick faster. Uh, the theory behind that is you start off with kick, and then it'll go down as three turn cooldown. Then the next turn you use deflection, you take no damage for that turn, you also do no damage to your opponent, but now kick only has two more turns left on its cooldown. That's what it's like, you know, advancing the clock turn forward. That's why on uh, rabbits, one of the reasons they're so good because they have dodge and burrow. Even though you do get hit on the second round of burrow if you're faster than your opponent, you still want to use it anyway because there's one turn where you're not getting hit which allows you to use dodge one turn earlier. And that's why rabbits are so hard to hit because uh, they're dodge burrow combo. Flare Youngling kind of has that with his deflection uh, being able to allow him to survive for one extra turn that way he can use kick more often. Uh, and that's why you want to use it on cooldown even if you're not using it to a block a timed attack. Unless they have a timed attack, then you have to save it for the time attack that's about to go off. So it requires a little bit of thought to use. Uh, but if there's none of that, you can just use it off cooldown as soon as you use kick. And then we have his first abilities. Uh, triple snap is terrible, don't ever take it. And blitz is a little bit better. If you're faster than your opponent, you'll always hit two times. If not, then you have a you know 50-50 chance of hitting two times. But if you're faster, you'll always hit two. Plus, there's a chance you'll hit a third time, which rarely ever happens when I do it. But it happens all the time when my opponent uses a multi-turn ability against me. So it does require some luck. That's like one of his only luck-based abilities. But there's so many abilities like this in the game that require uh, luck to hit an extra time, which can really add up. If you hit nothing but triple hits, that would actually uh, do quite a bit of damage. But if you only hit twice, that's still about the same amount of damage as a basic attack, which is all you need to do. Hitting a third time is just icing on the cake. Alright, and what about his other second ability, since I totally skipped over those? Uh, focus is a ability you can take if you want to go the power power route, where you want to actually uh, do some nice damage when you kick him. Let's see, I have a, a power power version. Where is he at? Actually, it's easier if I just do this. There it is. The power power version kick hits for 250 damage instead of 210 damage. So about 40 more damage, which is not half bad. And focus will increase your speed by 25% as well as your hit and crit chance. Uh, when you use focus, your speed basically goes up to that of an SS breed, about 325. So on the power power breed, you'll hit harder and you'll still be able to use kick as long as you take focus but you won't have deflection which allows you to use more kicks so there can be a case made for the power power where you're able to actually burn down your opponent faster because your blitzes are going to hit harder uh, as long as you use focus and you're still able to outspeed your opponent but not having deflection is kind of bad but then again you know you're also hitting harder so it is kind of a, a throw up between them do you want to get rid of deflection to take focus or do you want to just take deflection anyway and hope your opponent has a whole bunch of slow pets because the power power breed does have 260 speed which is literally like the vanilla speed value a pet is considered slow if it's below 260 yeah so you have to you basically have to take focus or uh, put him in a dazzling dance team so he can take deflection but really, eh, you don't really want to waste all those slots because Flare Youngling's not that great to really build an entire team around him. 
Uh, I mean, you could, but I would advise against it. All right, and what about for his last slot? Instead of taking Kick, you can take a Rampage. Uh, Rampage is not a half bad ability. Uh, for three turns, you deal 350 bees damage every turn. On the Power Power Breed, it's 430, which is quite a bit. That's like doing a triple hit on Blitz every time. It's actually pretty, pretty good. No, it's even more than a, a triple hit. Yeah, for every turn you do a crap ton of damage, but the downside to Rampage is that, oh wait, 350. No, it's like doing a triple hit every time. It's almost like the exact amount of damage is doing a triple hit on Blitz every turn. I was thinking it was like 400 or something. This one, yeah, it's about, it's actually a little bit less than a triple hit, but it's about the same amount, which is really good. Doing a triple hit Blitz every turn would actually be ridiculously great. That's a lot of damage. And doing Rampage for three turns is basically doing that. Uh, but you're stuck into the ability for three turns, which means you can't use deflection on cooldown, you know, you can't switch out or anything else, you're just stuck using Rampage for three turns. You can do a lot of damage for those three turns, but not, you know, like a crap ton of damage where it's really worth doing it. It's not a bad ability, you can use it, but one of the reasons Flare Youngling's good is because of his kick and like deflection synergy and just being able to use Blitz. Uh, but then again, Rampage is not a bad ability either. Uh, focus, I already explained when you'd use that, and Triple Snap is a bad ability, just don't take it. It's just a 1 to 3 chance of hitting for the same amount as a Blitz. It's just you don't have that extra benefit of being able to hit an additional time if you go first. I guess Triple Snap is what you take if you know you're going to be slower than your opponent, since it's always a random chance of hitting 3 times. Uh, but, yeah, you just want to take Blitz anyway, because he is... He's a pet that depends on speed, unless you just know you don't give a shit about speed and you're just going to go with a power power breed. Then you'd probably want to take triple snap and just take deflection and ignore focus. And then go rampage, this would be the power way to play him. Or if you want to play him the good way, you'd go focus, kick, and blitz. Huh. Wow, this guy actually has quite a bit, bit of ways to play him, I never really went this into detail about his abilities before. I mean, I know what all of his abilities do, and I have played the Power Power one around just to try it out with Focus, and it wasn't very great. The SS one is a lot better, I think. But enough talking about Flare Youngling, let's actually show him in a battle. Alright, this is a pretty bad one to start him off on. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm just gonna start off with him. Don't overthink, hurry up, just go. Wise words to live by. Alright, and let's go for a blitz. I'll use deflection on the turn after he puts out this. That way I can block his haunt. Oh, did I predict your haunt? Don't overthink. I think I did. I don't think I'll have deflection available though for uh, my next turn though. For when Curse of Doom goes off, since I was using it to block haunt. But that's okay, I don't expect to really live that long anyway. Alright, one more turn, hurry up is faster, I have to switch, this means I'm going to take a shit ton of damage in the back row. Um, he doesn't have a decoy breaker, so Cyberstein might actually not be a half bad choice right here. I mean, the mechanical Pandaren Dragon Wing. Yeah, he almost died to it. <laughs> oh, he took off. I guess he didn't want to think too hard about that victory. So yeah, that was actually a pretty good match, just showing what the Flare Youngling's capable of if you're able to outthink your opponent. It requires a lot of thought and knowledge about what your opponent's going to do in order to use deflection correctly. Uh, and his kick is pretty good for those extra damage. I think I was able to use it twice, even though he switched out, so it didn't really matter for that second one. But yeah, good stuff. He's a, he's a fun pet that would be better if he just wasn't a humanoid.